Hey everyone, this is S. M. Pratt, and today is the two-year anniversary of Evolutions. Evolutions is the most popular modern set in the hobby and is one of the most popular sets ever released in Pokemon. It's so popular that this set was the sole reason why some collectors got back into the game in 2016. You know, this is the reason for why some people are still here today in 2018, because this set went above and beyond the norm of Pokemon. Therefore, a lot of people bought this, naturally thinking, well, this set is very popular, so I'm going to tuck some of this away for years down the road, because it's probably going to increase in value. So what we're going to do today is compare the reality of that. We're going to talk about prices and costs from 2016, compare them to two years later in 2018. What's gone up, what's gone down, what's stagnated. So starting with English, this booster box, right out of the gate in 2016, was $90 to $100, somewhere in there. 95 average. The price today, the exact same. And there's one main reason why. It's still available at distribution. You can still buy this from a distributor as of making this video. More specifically, even if that were not true, this is widely available at all big box retailers. It's available pretty much everywhere. As of making this video, there's multiple options at 95 shipped today to buy this exact same box at the same price from two years ago. So therefore, English has not moved. And I remember even saying in 2016, over and over again, I said, keep in mind, the English print and how it's released and distributed is much different than the Japanese. So therefore the box stayed the same, it stagnated, and that is what it is as of 2018. However, when we get into the cards, we start to see something different. And I think there's a lot of patterns here and information you could extrapolate to the hobby in general. When we get into the graded cards, they did nothing but decline. Some declined a little bit less, some declined a lot more. So starting with one of the more popular cards, the Mega Four Art Charizard, this was the first full art Mega Charizard card released. And I would say, it's pretty fair to say it's a quality art. I think most people would agree to that. It was very exciting to see this when it released in 2016. However, it's very easy to grade. And that in itself is a whole nother discussion. A lot of people were used to the difficulty of X and Y and Black and White especially. Think Plasma, Secret Rare Charizard, or even Flash Fire. That definitely was more difficult to grade than this card. That was a nice upgrade in quality control. I would even say Evolutions is more parallel to the Sun and Moon print quality. There was a turning point with Evolutions that we saw moving forward. And before that, it was more difficult. So therefore, this card, as I make this video, has over 1,800 PSA 10 examples. That's almost 2,000 PSA 10 copies for a card that is two years old. That is unreal. So what happened? This was about $200 right out of the gate. You know, it was brand new, the pop was low and it incrementally decreased over time. 200 down to 100, and today it's about 50 to 75, somewhere in there. And I would say it's probably hitting an inflection point. This won't just indefinitely drop because obviously the cost of the card, the cost of grade time value is going to naturally create an inflection point where you'll start to see a rebound or at least where it will settle. I think we might be nearing that or we are there already. So that is the data from 2016 to 2018. It went down easily 100 to $200 because of that increased availability. Also, something else that should be mentioned just from this card alone, this is very indicative of modern Pokemon. This is uncharted territory in that this is just a new vast amount of product we have never experienced. Go look at Base Unlimited. You know, people talk about Base Unlimited as being widely available. There is no PSA 10 Charizard for sure. There's no PSA 10 Howl with 1,800 examples. I mean, this is unparalleled how much modern product is out there in such a short period of time. So therefore, this is what it's going to be for a while. This is exactly what I said two years ago, and here we go, proof positive of that comment that I made two years ago, how this will be available and available and available. So we're knee, knee deep in that availability. One other card, I don't have the Evolutions base set reprint, so we'll have to deal with the original base set instead. But the Evolutions base reprint is interesting. This one had 1,800 PSC 10 examples. The Evolutions base only had 120 PSC 10 examples. And I would say that is the undisputed most difficult card to grade. And it's also solid that it ended or it lined up with the most popular card, I would say, you know, outside the Mega Four Charizard. The base reprint is definitely that marquee card most people want to pull. So it's nice that you had a really good challenge. I mean, 120 is pretty low considering the amount of product we're dealing with here. But the interesting aspect about the base evolution reprint, if you look at the PSA 9 pop, it is pretty much identical to the PSA 10 
of the Mega Four Charizard. It's I think 1,890. The other one, this is about 1,860 something. So they're pretty identical when you're comparing the nine to the ten. However, that ten is a sharp drop off. So I think a lot of people will be like, okay, does that mean it held value? Did it go up in value? It's still decreased in value, but not as dramatically. I think right out of the gate, it was about 300 and change. Now it's about 200 and change. But the interesting thing with the base reprint is the scarcity element. Because it is difficult to grade, this is something that could fluctuate in availability. So that means the price can fluctuate as well. Where something like this Char Mega Charizard is probably always going to be out there with that amount of volume. Where 120 especially at that price point, that's something that could be eliminated from the market in one day or one week. So therefore, this is a card that's going to act differently. It's going to move differently. Even though it dropped over this two-year period, it could still have an uptick. It could still have some peaks and valleys, and it's not going to drop as hard as your Mega Far Charizard. I think an easy way to think about this is if you took a book, dropped it, it's clearly going to fall quicker than a piece of paper. I think that's going to be your analogy is that this will have more in the pop report down the road, but it's going to be incremental. It's going to be lighter. It's going to be less. It won't drop as hard as a card like this. So there you go. That's my overview for the English side of things. The overall answer is boxes stayed the same. Cards decrease because of the consistent and continual availability. So moving into the Japanese, this is where it gets fun. This is where it gets really fun. Uh, I'm excited because my prediction played out. I put money where my mouth is. Of course, I buy pretty much some of everything when it comes out. But I definitely bought more CP6 than I did Evolutions. And I put my money where my mouth is in that I said this was going to run out before this. Okay? And more specifically, this box is just choice. I mean, this, this is the literal... Japanese 1996 original design by Mitsuhiro Rita. You even have some of the base artwork preview. I mean, you got Char the original Charmander just sitting right there. This is what you want. You know, as phenomenal as Evolutions was, the old, its Achilles heel is the box design. This box is hands down superior. So not only is that an aesthetic difference, this box was not available distribution since about 2017. So it's been out of stock at the distribution level for over a year which more specifically separates it from the, little, the shortage we're experiencing, which I talk about in another video. There's a shortage right now in Japan. This was a year out, so it has nothing to do with that shortage. So this box right out of the gate, about 50 to 60, somewhere in there. Uh, Japanese were usually selling it around the $50 range because they had lower costs. On the uh, American side of things, probably about 60 because they had higher costs. Today, it's $100 shipped. In fact, I've shipped probably a whole case of this at $100 shipped. A whole case, for those who don't know, is going to fit in this box right here. So that's 20 boxes in the case for the Japanese side, where the English is usually six. So therefore, you have a bigger margin. It doubled in price to the absurd level, the absurd level of being more valuable than the English side, which started at double the price of the Japanese. I mean, that is just... That's the open and shut aspect of this case. That right there is all you need to know, is that the box is superior for Japanese. That's not going to change because this box is not going to be available at distribution. So therefore, whatever is out there is what remains. And I remember saying this in 2016 to people. I said, be careful when you're buying all this, you know, for fun, do whatever you want. But when you're buying this to tuck away for years to come, this one is still going to be here from English because they need it for the playability aspect. Where this... It's different in Japan. The structure is different in Japan. Even now with this box shortage, it shows the actual nucleus of Japan and how distribution is set up. So, therefore, the Japanese side actually is the reigning champion. The Japanese side is a sleeper everything. Japanese sets are sleeper sets. That doesn't mean they're just going to wake up in the giants. But what it means is people don't think about them. People don't talk about them. Even for me, I usually prefer the English side of things for sets. You know, even the full arts. I like to knock out the full arts for a binder, usually in English. But the Japanese has something going on right now. CP6 is that winner. CP6 was the answer. Uh, if you look at even some of the individual cards, it's going to act differently because there is no difficulty really in grading new cards from Japan. You know, right out of the pack. If it's a 9, that's more astonishing than if it's not than a 10 uh, because they're just made to an exemplary level. I mean, I always say it's like Kevlar on the back of those cards. You know, it, they're just phenomenally printed. So therefore, they're usually always going to be a 10. But even with that exceptional gradeability, the ease to grade, the price still went up on the Charizard. I think it was about 30 right out of the gate because of 10. Now it's about 40 to 60, somewhere in there. Uh, again, depending on availability. And that is pretty much the overall view is that Japanese boxes doubled 
uh, the cards have at least stayed the same, if not incrementally grown. I've sold plenty of the CP6 hollows, PSA 10, anywhere from $30 to $40, somewhere in there. So you have this consistency that has done nothing but decrease on the English side, but on the Japanese, at worst, it's sustained. At the absolute worst, it stayed the same. At best, it's doubled in the case of the boxes. And one other thing I want to talk about is the key factor here, outside of demand, because I think both of these have a decent amount of demand, the key factor here is distribution. You know, you probably probably picked up on that already. You know, how are these sets being dist distributed? The English side right now is basically failing on all fronts. The English side distribution, and I don't want to focus, go too hard on this, but the English side distribution right now is the absolute worst managed, the, the, the worst part of this hobby, period. It's that simple. Distributors are not honest. Distributors are not telling you what their bottom floor price is. Distributors are not trying to help businesses. They're not trying to help sustain the hobby. They're trying to make as much money as they can at, at whatever cost. So the English side and how it works is not only not investable, it's not sustainable. And we've already seen that react with Got That Saturation where they kept trying to dump this product. And what happened with Crimson Invasion? A ton of businesses invaded distributors and said, we're not doing this anymore. If you keep pulling this nonsense, we're pulling out. And you're losing your big customers. That's what people threatened. So they had, to, they had to daddy up on distributors and change their internal structure. But the bottom line is how English distribution works this day is not a reliable, consistent venture. It's whimsical, it's impulsive, it's emotional, and it's not professional. Where Japanese is the opposite. Japanese is so consistent that even the shortage of Japan has to still go through that process of integrity, of, of everything, based in principle, and they have to really analyze, you know, should we print more of this because we don't want to overprint? They always try to find that healthy balance. Where English is just like, oh, you want to buy 10,000 boxes? Okay, we'll get you 10,000 boxes, and we'll, we'll slick you a deal, you know, under everyone else's price point. So that is why you have what you have with Evolutions. You had an organic demand, but the handle and, and procedure from the distribution end just said, yeah, we'll just keep flooding out there. We're not caring about anything that happens. There's no thought whatsoever outside of getting that big, big chunk of cash. That's all that's happening right now in English. English modern is not only uninvestable, it's unsustainable. Even as a business trying to survive, it's not sustainable. So there you go. Japanese won out, not just because of its demand, because I think they both had pretty solid demand. It's more about how this was released. It's more about how it's handled internally. It's more about how that, that perception and, and the idea of principle and integrity moving forward is the long-term investment plan. You know, you got to focus on patience. You got to focus on principle. You got to focus on something that's going to sustain itself long term. Right now, this is the great example of short term gain for long term loss. This probably won't move for another five years. You know, you can mark my words. So there you go. That is the recap on the two year anniversary of Evolutions. We have a winner, which is the Japanese side, and we have a loser that has done nothing. <laughs> the typical lazy American that has done nothing uh, but ride on its laurels. But it might pick up, you know, like I said, five years. It might pick up down the road uh, it, once that distribution stops and it becomes unavailable. But then again, you got to worry about the rehash, like the reprint of Rolling Skies where they double down. So there it is. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Let me know how you feel about this if you agree, disagree. And as usual, that is pretty much it. Until next time.